Where was the leader? Oh, what the fuck was that sound? That was Asher. <laughs> Asher. Oh. You know what? Fuck you. He's dead. All right, Internet. I'll just come out and say it. I'm s I'm s I'm s ah, y'all should just go to Rumble. I'm I'm joking. I don't mind saying sorry. An awful attempt at saying sorry would be if you were sitting here making an apology video and I'm just sat here like this for the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> I think, yeah, that would be 100%. So you can give like a completely like heartfelt sounding apology while I just sit here like... Yeah, and, and I'm serious the whole time. Like I, I start crying, <laughs> I start bawling, and then meanwhile over here it's just like completely dead. Pe yeah, okay, enough, enough, enough. I mean, I don't want to... <laughs> Lance, I am sorry about that. I mean, his <laughs> fault. Uh, for those of you who do not know, Lance is our uh, newest editor on here, and we've brought him in to uh, sort of lighten the load and help bring in, uh, you know, help bring a little bit more, uh, uh, I guess you could say, a, uh, a more experienced eye when it comes to editing. Because though I've been editing for a long time, I haven't really stepped up my game in any way. And if you notice... Lance actually does a does a really good job, and he's still learning the ropes on how to do reactions and stuff like that because he's used to doing gaming videos for so long. But he's enjoying the work so far, as far as he's told me. And honestly, I would love to I'd love to know uh, you know what you all think of the editing so far. Feel free to let us know in the comments below. Well, yeah, and also Kate hasn't been able to participate in uh, recordings with us here here recently because multiple things. Um, familial stuff that we can't really get into because it's, a, uh, you know, there's some very bad stuff happening, but unfortunately, uh, Kate's MIA right now and hopefully she will be back soon. Fingers crossed. We'll see. But <clears throat> anyway, we have here 10 awful attempts at saying sorry. I have no problem saying sorry. I mean, if I mess up and I do something, I'm more than willing to admit when I'm wrong. But it, when it's on stuff that is ironclad and, like, 100% proven, I'm more than willing to admit, I'm sorry, but if it's something subjective, like for me saying, I prefer, like, I prefer, Di this is hypothetical, it's not true, but for me saying, I prefer Digimon over Pokemon, and then you point out all these videos online saying how Pokemon is far superior to Digimon... I'm not going to apologize for liking one thing better than the other. Especially if it's something subjective like that. So, I can... So, my whole deal with uh, with apologies is if it's on something... If it's on something truly horrible, you know, so you've done something, you've betrayed the trust of your fandom, you've embezzled money from your fans and stuff like that, yeah, I can definitely see your reason to apologize, but if you're, like, Travis Scott is one of the worst apology videos ever. You ever seen that? Dude, <clears throat> the uh, the Astro World tragedy that happened a couple, I think it was about a year or two ago, I can't remember, but kids died, dude. Kids, kids, like, these were kids. And here he is, and he's just like this, he's, he's like, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean for none of this to happen. I'm so remorseful. It's just like... You could feel no remorse in his voice. None. You could hear... Like, in his mind, he was counting the money that he made off that thing. Well, he proved, like, when it happened that he didn't care about anybody's safety. He only cared about the show. Yeah, and... and he wasn't going to stop the show to <coughs> make sure people were okay. And that's always been that was like, the whole thing. He got mad flack from the metal community because there are like countless, 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 countless videos online of metal vocalists stopping a song mid song to make sure someone's okay. Yeah, Corey did it. Like it's just, I mean, it's Chester did it. Rest in peace. Yeah, my that dude. is like hands down concert etiquette, and you're a piece of shit as like a person in a band or a musical artist like, if you don't follow that etiquette. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. If you're thrashing in the pit. Cool. That's that's like that's 
con- that's like that's consistent pit etiquette. But here's a rule: when someone goes down in the pit, what do you do? You pick them the fuck up. Exactly. That's especially like, if you're a bigger person. Yeah. If they if someone goes down, you pick them up. If they're hurt, then you step, then you get them to the side, and you get them to where they can get some help. Like honestly, I've I've seen it ha- happen at multiple shows. It's like you saw the show we did. Like I was just about to say, "Hey, everybody, hold up!" And then our yeah. drummer saw it and quit playing before I even could say that. Yeah, because you were like but, looking at one side of the like one side of the room. A yeah, dude got hit in the back of the head and dropped at our one of our shows uh, halfway through a song. Yeah, and as we soon as you saw it, to make sure he was okay, and he got back up, and he was like, "What the?" <laughs> No, I remember he was on the ground. I turned him over on his side, and I'm just like, "Hey, bud, bud, you all right? You all right?" And then he like his eyes open. They're a little like they're a little glazed over. He's like, "Dude, what the fuck?" <laughs> and I was like, "Here, let's get you up out of here." Got him outside. He got knocked out during our heaviest song too. Like, yeah, casket was, slam. No, it was uh, twisted delight. Oh, um, but honestly, dude, shit like that, I just I, when it happens. It's it's completely just, you know, it, it happens and you have to do something. You have to. Otherwise, you risk someone getting seriously, seriously hurt. And if that happened, at, say, say we're playing live, you know, because we've started a new band and everything. Uh, be on the lookout for some uh, some stuff from that. But we started, pl- uh, if, we, if we played somewhere, and then all of a sudden just someone gets someone gets hurt really bad at one of our shows i don't know if i'd i I don't know if i'd be able to like fully forgive myself because you know it happened under our watch even though we wouldn't be at like completely at fault for it but if it happened and we didn't notice it i'd feel terrible i would feel absolutely awful about not being able to do something in the moment well, Typically, someone will notice at some point if something's going on, and like Travis Scott had a freaking watchtower to see that something was clearly going on, and still kept playing while paramedics were clearly coming. Dude, I'm shit. sorry. When you see an ambulance rolling through the crowd, yeah, that's like that that's when you stop the show for a bit. Yeah, you stop the show and you tell like you're in a you're in an ultimate position of power mm. at that show because all eyes are on you. You have the ability to look back at the DJ, tell him to cut it, and then you tell the people, everybody, everybody, part, like, y'all need to Give make room, space. make room, make some space, part, you know, you, know you, you can basically be like Moses and part the Red Sea at that mm-hmm. point if you wanted to. And no, who knows how many lives happen. could have been saved. So many times. Yeah, how many lives so could have been saved, Anybody that wants dude? to argue that's impossible at a show like that, you don't know what you're talking about. Mm, you don't. Let's uh, go ahead and get into this. These are 10 awful attempts at saying sorry. We're going to rank YouTube's 10 worst apology videos from bad to downright terrible. So let's begin by looking at Rice Gum, oh, whose trash no. apology went by the name of This Dude Calls Me Out for Mystery Unboxing. Rice Gum's apology referred to a different video from three days prior, titled How I Got AirPods for $4, in which he promote a mystery box gambling site while making it sound as though the website was an easy way to make money. It's because not. Rice Gum had a young audience, he'd be called out by H3H3 Productions and PewDiePie for promoting gambling to children oh man back when h3h3 actually was like not good an idiot. <laughs> and not a piece of shit yeah. with rice gum's response coming in the days following <coughs> these all out videos his apology began on terrible footing as instead mm. of admitting any kind of wrongdoing he'd state that he was justified in doing the video as they paid him more than a hundred thousand dollars before- no 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 it does not matter if you got paid. What matters is if you are delivering false information unto your audience to scam them out of money. Mm-hmm. That's how that works. For going on to state that he wasn't the first YouTuber to promote the website. Ruskin then concluded the video by giving out multiple Amazon gift card codes. There's nothing I can really do but say sorry and give you these Amazon gift cards, so I'm sorry. Only each code had already expired by the Ooh. time the video went live. Beginning your apology by bragging about money before going on to offer your audience some old expired gift cards definitely makes for a pretty poor apology. I guarantee yeah. they were already, like, well, they were already used by the time by the time that they were there because the first person who watches the video 
instantly can just be like, click, 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 and boom. There you go. I've redeemed all of them. Ooh. And instead, uh, instead, you just do a random giveaway thing, dude. Like, do a thing where you have a, you have like a, a randomizer on Discord and people can enter into it and boom, they get, they, they're instantly entered in winning one of the 10 $1,000 gift cards or whatever. However, the video was short and sweet, so it felt as though it was consistent with Ricegum's personality, and the argument about other YouTubers promoting the site before him was actually a pretty reasonable point. Ricegum was also smart enough to keep his cool throughout the whole video, which Shane Dawson wasn't able to do, whose Ooh. incredibly volatile state led to YouTube's ninth worst apology video. Taking well. accountability began with Shane stating that emotionally chucking on a webcam and apologizing was stupid and childish. And that is stupid. That is something that a child does. Not something Something that a 31 year old man does that's not that's not good although this is exactly what he'd do mm. over the following 20 minutes shane was apologizing for the jokes he'd made during his 10-year youtube career and although he'd state that he was simply laying out his feelings the whole video used manipulative language and felt as though it was coming from a point of total desperation i'm so sorry i am so sorry to anybody that saw that it's something that i shouldn't even be able to get out of I should lose everything for that. Shane used all the classic buzz phrases such as I will educate myself and I will do better and I don't know who that person is anymore. And therefore the whole video just feels like a pathetic template to get hate oh off his back boy. as opposed to a personalized video with his own terminology to apply to his specific situation. The hypocrisy continued into the end of the video when Shane stated that being defensive was a poor way to make changes. I'm going to go on the defensive and that's not a good way to live and it's not a good way to grow. Yet he seemed completely unaware that his entire video was defensive in response to the drama that he had found himself in. However, at least Shane didn't insinuate that his audience was stupid, as when the Fine Brothers uploaded their awful apology mm. that accidentally insult the entirety of YouTube. Mm. Probably talked about this, but back when we originally made our video talking about the Fine Brothers situation, we held back because we were under the same MCN, full screen. We held back. And we were told, you know, we handled it with, uh, we handled it with grace. We handled it with, uh, you know, I ain't got to do that shit anymore. So whenever we, uh, did the, one of our first Sunny V2 videos, it was about them and we didn't mm -hmm. really hold back on that one. Nope. If y'all want to see that, um, sure they'll, I, I'm probably put a link to it somewhere. The Fine Brothers had pioneered the reaction genre on YouTube with their Kids React series and would post a video in early 2016 simply titled React World in which it sounded like the Fine Brothers were trying to copyright any kind of YouTube reaction video. As a result of their poorly crafted concept, they'd receive hate from every corner of the internet, prompting what we're now calling the eighth worst apology in YouTube history. The apology began with the Fine Brothers admitting that their video was worded poorly and that they never planned on trying to copyright YouTube's reaction genre. First and foremost, we're sorry for confusing people by using terminology like our React format. We were never trying to say that every video where someone reacts to something else is something we would try to control. However, despite stating this, the two would then go on to explain that they had taken down other reaction content in the past, while continuing mm -hmm. to imply that the audience was stupid for being unable to comprehend the concept laid out in their initial React World video. Just because we have or might get trademarks doesn't mean we're going to run around and start taking down videos. Except you did. Multiple times. And honestly, I... Mm, I go into more detail on it on the video we did completely about them. But... It'd be, it'd be hypocritical. Here's the thing. It's like if we made content and we were hypocritical enough to start... For instance, if someone made a reaction video to the offer, you know, our short film that we did, and they hated it. They, they were tearing it apart, this and that, and blah, blah, blah. How hypocritical would be would would we be if we were to take that down? If someone does a reaction to our content and expresses themselves completely honestly and and forthright, how hypocritical would we be if we were to take that video down and say, "Oh, they're infringing upon our copyright." When literally we react to stuff all the time and it's mm. it's not that I would want someone to not enjoy what we did to that level but if they gave constructive criticism i would want to see that <laughs> yeah i would want to learn from it you know what i mean same be like okay so that's a good point we could do that in the future like, yes stuff like that oh man 
When I say constructive criticism, I don't mean things like, by the way, your content is the bottom of the barrel and you guys should go eat a dick or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It's like everyone wishing that we get cancer, this and that, and blah, blah, blah. It's like, dude, grow up. <clears throat> Life's too short to be pissed off all the time. Too stupid to understand how this works is basically the sum of this apology in one sentence. So yeah, classic arrogant non-apology. Sorry, not day, sorry. Plus, the whole thing is like, just because we're gonna go get a copyright and trademark doesn't mean we're gonna run around taking videos. I'd be like, then why do you need the trademark? Exactly. It's because they saw Ellen DeGeneres and they saw all these other big people finally getting into the reaction game, and they felt threatened. I thought they could probably sue the really big money people for it. Exactly, too. and make and make money that way. But that's the thing. You like you're in a niche group as is. It'd be like me trying to copyright the term like like the full term renegade. And like anytime someone used renegade on the internet in any sort of way, I could sue them. That's stupid. Slightly, as their initial mistake was. It's my brand. Deal. However, the same couldn't be said for Travis Scott, oh. who posted the seventh worst apology. Just the seventh? Damn. There must be some bangers later on. And people died Jesus. at his Astro World concert. It happened in November 2021, and despite everybody in the crowd chanting the I, I gotta show say, work. Sonny, if if six through one don't involve people dying. I, I would have rated this higher. I would have probably put this very high, if not yeah. the highest. This is literally we'll see like what the... a shitty apology for getting people killed. Yeah, like, and this is and, something and, he should be arrested. And, for, and you see, honest. where what we're talking about is all the videos that we've seen so far have resulted in you know potential scams, potential like hurt feelings, potent yeah stuff like that. This is where life and death come into the picture. There are actual charges for being indirectly responsible for someone dying. Yes. It's like, that's a big deal. Anyway, yeah, let's... Travis Scott continued, which ultimately resulted in the 10 fatalities alongside oh, 10. 500 I thought it was eight. injuries. As the news of the tragedy began to go viral, Travis was planning his apology and would take to Instagram with someone of an unconventional approach. He was seemingly trying to avoid having his face clickbaited by the media and therefore recorded a short video in black and white under bad lighting from a bad angle with his eyes closed and his hand covering his face for the majority of the video. This was certainly a 200 IQ play, however, it it also made for an extremely terrible, unpleasant viewing experience and resulted in comments such as, Travis Scott is clearly much more focused on his headache than his apology, as well as he gave his forehead more respect than the people who died of a horrible, painful death as a direct consequence of his inaction. The words mm. he used in the video weren't much better either, because as highlighted by this comment, his apology is basically, damn, that's crazy. I just want to send out prayers to the, to the ones that was lost last night. I mean, I'm honestly just devastated. I could never imagine anything like this just happening. The funniest part is that in his apology, Travis is talking like he wasn't there. It's like the dude just woke up and was like, oh man, people died at Travis Scott's concert. The apology was certainly yeah. bizarre. However, it wasn't nearly as strange as the sixth worst apology by Simply Kenna, who became YouTube's first creator to apologize in the form of a poem. The apology came in response to being called out for plagiarism and seemingly as an overcompensation for trying to be original, Simply Kenna wrote a three and a half minute poem using nothing but incredibly deep metaphor. Am I a human? Am I a monster? Or am I something in between? Now to Kenna's credit, the poem was pretty well written. However, using it to apologize felt like an unbelievably strange move. The whole point of an apology is to be sincere. To write a poem, rehearse it, those fake facial expressions and background music, babe, that's not sincere. An apology in poetry is me in my rawest form, even though I'm not raw at all, because I rehearse this instead of just talking to you guys naturally. That poem is so gawny, still trying to be aesthetic in an apology video. The video was so bad that Kenna then posted another apology video to say sorry for the first one, and as summarized by this comment, if you have to make an apology video for an apology video, it might be time to take a break from YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. However, at least simply Kenna had the chance to take it <coughs> voluntarily as when T Martin posted his Hold on, hold on. 
Did did they say what it was uh what it was about? Apology was certainly bizarre. However, it wasn't nearly as strange as the sixth worst apology by Simply Kenna, who became YouTube's first creator to apologize in the form of a poem. The apology came in response to being called out for plagiarism. Oh, okay, plagiarism. Yeah, okay. Yeah, for, I'd forgot about it by the end because the poem part was just <coughs> so like, what the fuck? Yeah, it slipped my mind. I thought I thought she was being called out for plagiarism on her apology. No. Nah. Just plagiarism is what she was apologizing for, apparently. Mm. As when T. Martin posted his awful apology, the audience. Yeah, this one, this completely. one was was in the bad. Of what we're calling the, the fifth worst apology. The CS:GO lottery stuff, and the fact that him and Tom Syndicate were co-owners of it and were promoting it as though it was something that they were completely unaware of. I'm sorry, that's kind of piece of shit behavior. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, anyway. In YouTube history, T. Martin promoted a website called CSGO Lotto, claiming that he found the site at random and was able to use it to uh -huh. win expensive CSGO items. Although, it wouldn't be long before T. Martin was exposed as being one of the owners of the website, prompting the now infamous and Tom, crime story both, yeah. video. The apology began on fake manipulative footing as T. Martin sat there talking to his dog about how difficult the video was going to be. Cooper, I have no idea how I'm going to record this video, dude. The However, dog's like, oh my god, this is so cringe, stop. Yeah. <laughs> well, exactly. No doubt. The video was supposed to be difficult as T. Martin would do nothing besides sit there and spend two minutes telling the audience how dumb they were. My connection to CSGO Lotto has been a matter of public record since the company was first organized in December of 2015. This Oh, really? Then how come you were acting like, oh my gosh, I just fa guys, guys, I just found this website. It's called, it's called, uh, Renegade CSGO Lotto. Uh, I totally <laughs> found it at random, and, uh, people should be on here gambling all their money away. Uh, like, dude, just admit. It's totally weird. It even says at the bottom of the page that the owners of this website are Nico One and Nathan Hamilton. Yeah. It's two guys with the exact same names as us. Isn't that crazy? It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Manner of public, yeah, public, yeah, bullshit. This is and always has been a clearly stated policy. He barely even apologized. He's putting the blame on the people for not understanding, WTF. He basically called his fans stupid. I love how he didn't even apologize and basically just said it's our fault. It didn't help that T. Martin decided to film the apology in the entryway to his mansion with his expensive truck sitting just outside the window, but at least he was smart enough to flaunt his wealth subtly as the Liver King's terrible apology began oh. bragging about oh, this one's pretty bad. This one's pretty fucking bad. Don't get me wrong, I, I wasn't a follower of Liver King or anything like that. I was just like, eh, he's just doing his own thing, living his own life. I'm not gonna tell everyone, like, like this guy's, like, this guy's the truth. But instead, yeah, this this gets pretty bad. Money he had. Prior to the Liver King confession, he'd consistently reiterated that his physique was natural. Although when more plates, more dates uploaded a video showing that this wasn't true, uh, the Liver King felt the pressure to apologize. The Liver King would begin his apology by bragging about being rich. Before social media, I was rich and anonymous, and after social media, I'm still rich but no longer anonymous. Before going on to try and convince the audience that he never planned on becoming famous. And I never expected this kind of exposure in the public eye. Despite having grown the brand using his face, name, and image as the most yeah. recognizable feature. The Liver King then goes on to claim that his persona was nothing more than an experiment to help struggling teenagers. Liver King, the public figure, was an experiment to spread the message. Our people are hurting at record rates with depression, autoimmune, anxiety, infertility, low ambition in life. Our young men are hurting the most, feeling lost, weak, and submissive. Which and how does that, how does it, you know, justify it with now, after seeing this, they're probably going to feel even more depressed, low, you know, low ambition, you know, oh, knowing that the, so the whole thing that they was idolized, he lied that, like, how strong he was was just natural due to eating and working out oh uh being eating an outdoorsy kind of guy you know eating nothing but like raw meat and liver all the time and and it's just like dude yeah it, it was an image that he was putting so it turned out, i figured that's what it must have been i figured yeah this dude probably worked out but i guarantee you he probably like whenever he wanted to go promote something he would take off like his designer stuff or he would take off his his uh, outfit and he would 
and he would basically go into Liver King mode. That's what I... Because everyone, for the most part, puts on a mask whenever they present themselves on YouTube or on social media. Me, I'm pretty much... I, I don't do that. Basically, what you see is what you get. I'm Nathan Hamilton. Period. Also, I gotta say, Jesus Christ, man, if you gotta make an apology video, I don't care how buff you are, do it with a shirt. Like, put a fucking shirt on. Like, act like you're being serious for half a minute instead of just trying to, like, show your muscles off to everybody. You know what I mean? But yeah, oh, but this is his brand, dude. You don't understand. I don't give a fuck. I know, I know. I'm joking. It's it's bullshit. Felt like a cliche cop-out to shift the blame from what he was being accused of. Mm. The beginning of the apology was bad, the magnitude of the initial lie was bad, and the need for the apology was almost non-existent in the first place. However, because the Liver King was able to finish the video with a couple of reasonable points, he's avoided being any higher on this list. Besides, it's almost impossible to have an apology worse than the one posted by social repose. The video mm. had been uploaded after his ex-girlfriend publicly accused him of cheating, so naturally Social Repose wanted to share his side of the story, doing so in a video titled Re, I'm an Idiot. The apology began with the most unemotional attempt at saying sorry. I understand what I did. I understand that it's pretty uh, wrong and heinous, and like I said, I I messed up. I, I do deeply I do deeply regret it. Before he'd gone to explain Jesus. that he had cheated in his previous relationship. Like all that uh, eye cheat. language that says you're not serious about anything you're saying. Yeah. Right now. I'm sorry. I'm looking at this face right here and this like guy's not just... even being able to look at a camera without looking away. Yeah. And then like blinking a bunch and like uh, I'm yeah. really sorry. Don't get me wrong. There's sometimes people have just like that natural demeanor and just like have like a nerve like just uh, some people are nervous whenever it comes to talking about personal stuff. In which, you know, the the whole thing is like when I when I talked about when I've talked about personal stuff, I often find myself rambling because I can't help myself. And I have to be like, stop it. Okay. It also just sounds like he's reading from a script, though. There's not yeah. any, like, oh, God, I fucked up, like, in his voice. You and, know? and also right here, I'm sorry, but he looks like, mm, I'm, no, nah, I'm not going to result. I'm not going to, I'm not going to resort to just, like, ad hominem attacks. Let's just. Let's just hear what he has to eat on her, just like I did my ex-girlfriend. And it was therefore the girlfriend's fault for not knowing that he was going to cheat again. And she kind of took me on with with the thought that she could fix me and that everyone did warn her and I, I couldn't stay faithful. And here we are. Throughout the video, Social Repose seems so proud of how broken he is as a person. Clearly, I have a lot of deep-seated issues. I have a lot of problems. Which was justified in his own head as he apparently had this incredible YouTube channel. I am so deep deeply entrenched in social repose just as an entity that it does it comes first it comes before all my love and relationships and even family to an extent this mm. the, as much as i hate to say it you know there's like there there is some stuff that does happen when, when stuff like this does happen i think people need to be called out for their infidelity and stuff like that 100% but I've also seen other apology videos from the other side of things where it's the woman who cheats first. And I'm not saying everyone in the comments, but there is an, a, an amazing amount of people who are just like, oh, you were just trying to find yourself. You, you still, you're still figuring out who you are. You're still doing this. You're still doing that. It's like, then break up with them. It's like, you don't have to cheat. Break up. Be like, I don't see this relationship going any further. I'm sorry. I'm breaking up with you. <laughs> and it's just like, it, and that's the thing. You could go out after that and do whatever the fuck you want. Be willy nilly. You know, just, you know, you know, be, you know, have casual relationships with whoever. Doesn't matter. But what matters is if you have the trust of somebody in a relationship and then you go out and you just fuck that all up. And then all of a sudden it makes the pain even worse. Why do people do this to themselves? I don't know. Why? It makes no sense. And the thing is, too, is I'm like, to an extent, relationship stuff is someone's private business business and everything. But at the same time, if you have two personalities that are online personalities, like your fans are invested in your life through sharing your life with them through the internet. Yes. And they have a level of trust with you that you're a good person because that's why they enjoy watching you and your content and everything. 
And then when you go and, like, cheat on someone that they know who it is and everything, then you've just proven to them that, wait, you're not a trustworthy person. I exactly. you were trustworthy. So you broke your trust not only with your significant other, but with your fan base to an extent. Yeah. And so, like, uh, that, it, it just irks me that someone's just like, oh, yeah, I, I put... The, the channel and all, and all this stuff first and I'm just like well clearly not or you would be careful more careful with your life decisions so as not to break the trust of your fans yeah this is my life I've chosen it however at least social repose made some attempt at saying sorry as Sienna May's apology was so Ooh. bad that people began to question if she was even one. saying sorry at all Sienna May was one of TikTok's fastest growing creators until another TikToker accused her of assault after which she'd take a break from the internet and return with what we're calling the second worst apology in YouTube history. It began with the explanation that taking a month off social media was the most difficult month of Sienna's life before she'd gone to state that her purpose in life was to post TikTok dances and untouched photos of herself. Throughout the video, Sienna implied that her youth excused her from any wrongdoing, although the worst part was that she never even apologized and rather spent more than half of the video playing what she called a relatable Sam Smith song while doing a choreographed dance with the goal of inspiring her audience. The stupidity of the apology is best summarized by this comment reading, the fact that she and her team watched this and said, yeah, this is a good idea is hilarious to me. All of them together make one brain cell. <laughs> yeah. You see, I see stuff like that. I saw this video and I had no idea what the context was. I think it was a uh, moist critical who, who informed me as to what was going on. Penguin zero for those of you uh, who, who aren't aware of his like official name on Twitch. But Charlie basically just put it out there and he said, and he let me, he let everyone know why she was making this apology video. And I'm like, there's no admission of guilt, no admission of wrongdoing or anything in this. Why in the hell is this woman, or is this woman making this interpretive dance video about, about how she's a social butterfly and she hopes that she can inspire people when the number one thing that you should be inspiring people to do is take responsibility for their actions and make yourself a better person for that. Instead, it's just like, oh, I'm young, I'm growing, I don't have to apologize yet. Dance. That she's also probably under the impression that she's a woman that did something to a man, so everyone will just overlook it. So that's kind of how society works, unfortunately. To a certain extent, yes, I see that. What? Although Sienna's one brain cell was still significantly more than oh. the amount that Laura Lee had when she mm. posted almost objectively the worst apology in YouTube history. Laura Lee posted the apology in response to some old tweets, although she would have been significantly better off remaining silent as there was nothing within this video that wasn't a complete travesty. She'd spend the first 30 seconds talking about nothing besides how difficult the video was going to be. And this video has been so hard, so much fun. before going on to completely lose it on camera while implementing all if the apologizing is one of the hardest things you've ever done then you have problems know that I'm better okay. than that. Laura Lee cried and apologized, then cried and apologized some more. Although in the process, the audience noticed that there were no tears coming out of her eyes. Is this an audition? I say no tears. Literally no tears coming from her eyes, yet she keeps wiping away. I think she forgot to buy the eye drops. After everybody came to realize that Laura Lee wasn't even crying, she'd take a month off YouTube to reflect, after which she'd return with an apology video for her initial apology, where she'd conclude the drama with more NPC YouTube apology dialogue. I have changed so much as a human being. I have grown so much through the situation. I have grown and I have learned so much. No, you haven't. Okay, then. No, you haven't. You I ain't learned, learned shit. If I just disappear for a while and then come back, hopefully everyone will forget that I did something fucked up. You, you ain't learned shit. The only thing that you have learned is that Actually, the only thing we've learned is that you're terrible at acting. I'll say it again. I still think the Travis Scott video, in terms of severity, in terms of like what happened, should have been higher up on here. 
But in terms of like dis, I mean, I guess it's like rated in terms of like how terrible the actual apology <clears throat> was. Not how well, yeah, terrible. how disingenuous and how like not how terrible what they were apologizing. That's for true. Was. Yeah, I see it now. But what he was apologizing for, kind of in my opinion, makes the apology all the more awful as well. Because I don't know. It's like when you're going to treat a situation like that with zero empathy, it proves how much of a soulless human being you are, you know? Yeah, it's not, yeah, it, it it's kind of messed, it, it's beyond messed up, I should say. Because it, it's his, the, the situation and his apology is the overall worst of it, is the worst situation. But in terms of just like pure apology, the pure apology video itself, yeah, I can definitely see Laura Lee being worse. Because no tears, no, like... The worst acting. Like, I, I don't get it, dude. I, I, how can someone make an apology video and not actually feel something? Mm-hmm. Not actually, like, uh, make a personal video, not feel something. I don't get that. Because I, if, that's the thing. That's why you don't see me make many personal things or anything like that. It's because I don't want to put too much out there that uh, that is that's too close to the chest and I don't want to risk uh, I don't want to risk anything uh, but you know because there's there's a lot of family stuff that I don't talk about that affects me on a, on a regular basis and I, and it's stuff that I don't really want here on the channel but if it's someone that for instance the I hate bringing it up but the you know the Chelsea situation the fact that she was on the channel and we had people asking about her for a while and everything, I put it out there and I was as respectful as possible to her family and, you know, in the situation. And I'm going to make a video discussing that at a, or discussing like, you know, like a little bit of a post, a post script on it, but we'll get there when we get there. But I'll try to keep my business to myself. I do too, because as much as I love interacting with people on YouTube, there was definitely business that I'm sure would have been to people like if they got to hear about it that happened back a long time ago but I, oh, a few years ago yeah i refuse to talk about the details the... of what was done to me on the channel i don't care I don't yeah that... those people anymore to put them out there as being terrible people so yeah and and honestly i go back and i look at that era where where drama was more prevalent on the channel and i'm not and i don't i don't like it I didn't like how it felt being drenched in that drama and just seeing everything unfold the way that it did. Mm-hmm. I hated it. But anyway, I guess uh, I guess those were ten awful attempts at saying sorry by Sunny V2. If you like the original video and you want to see more from Sunny V2, feel free to click his name in the title of the video. And until next time, I'm Nate. I am Nick. Y'all be good people. Peace.